the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 25th day of this conference. It is finished. O come Holy Spirit, as your word comes forth, drive away from our presence every activity of the evil one, bring answers to all of our prayers, and bring to us all the various levels of graces and blessings that we need. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, this issue that I'm coming to talk about is very crucial to the theme of deliverance. So I'd like to encourage you to pay attention to what I'm about to discuss with you. Have you ever wondered what the greatest strength of Satan is? Have you ever thought about it? I'll tell you what the greatest strength of Satan is. The thing that makes him look powerful over your life is in one word. The flesh. The flesh. The flesh is the thing that makes him look powerful over your life. Listen up. No matter what level of deliverance you go through, every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to work. Meaning that you are not truly delivered when you are still alive to the flesh. You are not truly delivered when you are still alive to the flesh. And this is where the burden of laborious, continuous deliverance in futility comes from. The attempt to continue to cast out spirit, cast out spirit, and it doesn't seem to end because people are still in the flesh. When you dwell in the domain of the flesh, you get to a point where the spirits on their own can go and come without being casted because the gateway for a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh. And that is why this evil spirit mock we men and women and people of God. Before you say, in the mighty name of Jesus, they are gone and you think a miracle has happened. No, a miracle didn't happen. That person has reached a point where the spirit can come and go on their own because a gateway for the stronghold has been created. So the thing is watching. It knows. It leaves before you say Jesus because it knows that it can come back in. So people continue to receive temporary results. Temporary breakthrough. Temporal deliverance. But I want you to know that there is a way that God can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all. It is possible that you can win today and win tomorrow and stay a winner. It's possible that you can stand strong today, stand strong tomorrow, and then you will now be the person who will bring other people for deliverance. Because you are a possessor and your possession has remained with you and you can now turn to others and begin to communicate the dimensions of the light and power that God has brought to you. And one of the mysteries that produces healing and deliverance is the mystery of the blood, the mystery of light, the mystery of the cross, the ministration of the Holy Spirit. We've already dealt with the blood of Jesus and the issues relating to it. But I want you to know that as far as deliverance is concerned, the greatest strength of Satan is the flesh. The flesh, that's the weak point. So Romans chapter 7 verse 18 will say, For I know 
that in me in this flesh dwelleth no good thing for i know that in me in this flesh dwelleth no good thing mind you this is not a baby christian talking no this is an apostle an apostle who has been granted access to mysteries and he is opening unto us the tragedy of the of the flesh and the imminent doom of anyone who chooses to walk in the realm of the flesh so he is not just talking about his body necessarily he is talking about a dimension of our being that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing that means that if you dwell in the realm of the flesh you have given satan an advantage the biggest advantage over your life it doesn't matter what else you have or are once you live in the flesh you have submitted yourself for defeat so what is the flesh i explain to you what the flesh is what is the flesh the flesh is defined as a nature of living a way of thinking and a way of acting that is against the ways of god that is the definition of the flesh the flesh is defined as a nature of living a way of thinking a way of acting that is against the ways of god so this kind of living affects your life it affects your mind it affects your body it affects every part of you and it is against the ways of god so every time the bible talks of the flesh remember it is a way of living it is a way of thinking it is a way of acting that is against the ways of god so when scriptures talks about the flesh the understanding is twofold the first one is sin the natural man the original sinful nature we are referring to the person who is not regenerate no matter how innocent you are the prophet put it nicely in iniquity did my mother conceive me so you did not have to do anything directly by the fact that a woman gave birth to you you inherited this nature what some school of thought will call original sin so i'm talking about the very nature of the fallen man the one who has not encountered the life the way of god that person who is born and living in the flesh the sin nature the remedy for that is not counseling the remedy for that is deliverance deliverance through what we call salvation signified by baptism so salvation here is a form of deliverance it is a special deliverance to remedy that generational negative pattern using baptism as the outward sign to legislate that spiritual mystery so listen this sinful nature i'm talking about you can't correct it you can't cast it out you can't bind it the only way to be saved from this is through baptism and your belief that jesus is lord and he died for your sins no amount of all nights or prayer sessions will take this original sin out except baptism so are you beginning to see that it is not every matter that requires the level of effort that we put into prayer all you need is understanding of the mysteries of god and applying them when it comes to some issues so this particular sinful nature that we are talking about the original sin nature is not a nature that you correct or renew it has to be taken away completely by the substitutionary work of jesus christ what he did on the cross and only a genuine encounter with the son of god through the mystery of the cross and blood will remedy this sinful nature that is why the bible says this is the record that god has given us eternal life and the life is in his son that whoever has the son has life so there is no assumption as to whether the nature is in you or not if you are if you have not encountered the son no matter how much you convince yourself the life of god is not in you you may have money you may have education you may feel good about yourself 
the very nature of God, being saved is not there. Just because you feel good about yourself doesn't mean you are free. Because what we are addressing here is something that is spiritual in context. And just because you feel you have never done anything wrong in your life doesn't mean you are free. Once you are not baptized, you are not free. So the life is in his son. So that whosoever has him has eternal life. So that if you are not born again, that life is not in you. Period. If you are not born again, that sinful nature is still at work in you. And this is the cheapest way of giving yourself to darkness. That you have willfully brought yourself under the governance of Satan. So do you have relatives who are not yet baptized? Maybe you are listening to me and you are not yet baptized. The flesh is at work. So scripture will say, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. And I can only advise you. I can't free you. Choose life that you may live. And one of the ways you choose life is to say, Lord, I submit to your government. I come willingly out of this hold. I come willingly out of this government of Satan. And I want to be baptized. I want to accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And that is deliverance. And the name of that deliverance is salvation. But as free and as cheap as it is, you must participate in it. Otherwise, it won't work. So my dear friends, today the point I'm making is this. As far as deliverance is concerned, there is a crucial issue that we need to pay attention to. And that crucial issue is that the greatest strength of Satan is the flesh. And I defined the flesh. The flesh is defined as a nature of living, a way of thinking, and a way of acting that is against the ways of God. And I'm saying that every time the Bible talks about the flesh, the understanding is in twofold. And I started talking about the first understanding that is the original sinful nature. The man who has not been baptized, the woman who has not been baptized, that person has not been saved. And I'm saying that the only deliverance for that person is baptism as an outward sign to legislate that spiritual mystery. So if you have not been baptized, you are still living in the flesh and you have given the devil the greatest advantage over you. So I'm just encouraging you, in case you have relatives who are not yet baptized, or maybe you are listening to me and you are not yet baptized, seek baptism. It is the first step to salvation and the first step to enjoying all the other spiritual mysteries that God has in store for us. For our prayer intention today, we are using Romans chapter 8 verse 12 to 13. And it reads, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but this obligation is not to the flesh or to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the Spirit, you will put to death the misdeeds of the body and you will live. We pray for grace to live according to the Spirit and not to the flesh. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, we ask you to look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. My dear friends, have a prayerful day. Shalom, and God bless you.